Hello everybody, it's time for the last day of the main block of the sega -thon. We are playing some Crazy Taxi and I have Volk with me. So hey, hey, it's time to donate some crazy money! <laughs> I was waiting for that. Now, I do recall seeing a bit of a prompt in the Discord just before we started to try and make this last about an hour. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through three rounds of arcade mode and three modes of original one on the 10 minute thing. And I'm going to alternate them just so you see the different levels, you know, a bit of variety as we go along. And let's go from there and try to make some crazy money. <laughs> Indeed, this is going to be Uber. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, uh, we did have the sound test beforehand, but if it's a bit loud or a bit quiet, let me know and I can adjust things on the fly as well. Oh, it's got to be BD Joe to start off with. He was the rep in All Stars Racing, after all. Yeah, he's the one who I associate most with Crazy Taxi, because like, he's the main man, eh? I don't know, I kind of like the guy who looks like he came fresh out of like the Italian mob with the Hawaiian shirt, he's alright too. Uh, Axel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. So, main gameplay of Crazy Taxi is you pick people up, you take them to their destination with literally zero regard for the laws of the road. Um, this is like one of the games I grew up playing back on the Dreamcast. I'm actually playing the GameCube version here because I couldn't get the Dreamcast one to run unfortunately. At least not on stream. But it's basically the same thing. Yeah, thankfully the GameCube version ended up uh, coming out just in time before like the licenses and what have you expired. And now we're left with the uh, later re-releases just not being as good because it doesn't have the offspring or bad religion. And that's illegal as far as I'm concerned. Well, to be fair, I have played through that version and the replacement soundtrack is pretty good. Like, I enjoy those songs when I'm playing, but like, it's not as iconic as this particular installment of the soundtrack either. Exactly, some might argue that those two bands collaborating together for this actually made the game. Otherwise I think it would be kind of not as good somehow. It's one of those rare occasions where the music kind of makes the game so much that just changing the soundtrack just changes the general opinion of the game drastically. Of course, if you play the PC version, you can still mod in the original soundtrack, except the problem there is that it sort of plays them out of order, because it, it's like just programming a different way as to when certain songs are prompted to play, so it's a little bit finicky, but like you still get your offspring and your bad religion if that's your last result. The main yeah, different... The only, yeah, yeah the only bad thing about that is that you don't start with, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you also, in the PC one and the reissues and whatnot, is they don't have the licensed brands that you take people to. Like, I just took this guy to KFC. They've replaced that with a generic fried chicken shack in the uh, remaster. And I same, want chicken! <laughs> yeah, and same, like, the Pizza Hut, and I think there's Feeler, the clothing company, and also Levi's. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a bit weird how they kind of got those all in there. I'm not sure if they had to like properly pay a licensing thing or if they just wanted to make it seem more quote unquote real. Uh, possibly. I think it was just tying up to the culture of like the feel they wanted to have with the game, I suppose. Yeah. Alright, so um, we should probably go over the usual stuff we do in this here charity event just yep. to explain who we are and what the hell we are doing here playing Crazy Taxi. And uh, we are Hellfire Comms. Um, occasionally, and Tom is here, but for this moment he is not. But he should be here later on. Yeah. And uh, we are currently raising money for Child Play, which is a charity organization that specializes in worldwide distribution of toys and games for kids in hospital to make their stay just that little bit more tolerable. Because, as we all know, hospital sucks, but unfortunately the kids don't tend to realize that until it's too late. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be shut in hospital for days, sometimes for weeks on end with nothing to do. So if this charity can like provide the kids with like games to play and that to keep them company, then you know it really does help them out. So if you've got if you've got some money to spare, it's very much appreciated. And also, I should actually go the right way. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. You're taking the scenic. That's what. Yeah, although the downside with that is some of these customers are incredibly impatient and if you take too long they will jump out mid-trip, some of them will kick the side of your car as they get out, you know, <laughs> they, they're not too happy about having to wait. And they also... But they're fine with near-death experiences. 
<laughs> yeah, they actually tip you for that. Like, if you do like loads of near misses and jumping over cars and stuff, they tip you as you go along. Like, you see them numbers popping up on the screen now. You know, I can just picture like these, all these people just being incredibly rich and they just have wads of dollars on them and just every time you go past a car they're just sort of showering you with bills. <laughs> yeah, this is back when you could get tipped for acting irresponsibly before Twitch was a thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Alright then, so seeing as this is the last day, this will be your last chance to get some of our lovely donation incentives and also is your last day to get in on that sonic mania bid war and also the knights bid war that we have going and just to clarify what that means the knights bid war involves a couple of the greatest hits of gamer richie uh, he will be singing uh dream dreams the regular version or dream dreams the sweet snow version currently sweet snow is winning with ten dollars and regular version is behind with just two dollars. Uh, so you could easily influence that if you so desired. But for the game itself, there is also a bit more going on between the Sega Saturn version being played and the PS2 version of the game being played. Uh, currently the Saturn version is sitting at $78 and the PS2 version is sitting at $31. Oh, nice. And finally, we have the Sonic Mania Plus Bid War. Uh, we've already established that it's going to be an Knuckles mode, but we are currently trying to get a handle of who exactly we are taking in. Uh, currently, Mighty is in the lead with $462.69. Then we have Sonic in second place with $440.69. Third is Tails with $317 on the nose. And Knuckles with $187.04, and Ray dead last with barely enough money for cap there, which is $39 reduce. Yeah, we did actually get a few coming for Ray last night while Stefan was playing Jet Set Radio, which was surprising to me, but I'm also happy to see a little bit more love coming in for the underdog there. Indeed, indeed. And uh, as far as incentive games, you can still get in for if we reach our milestones. At $3,500, we will unlock Fantasy Star Online Bluebirds, which will be played by myself, and Samurai Snake should be joining me for that as well. If we get to $4,000, we'll have Sonic World, played by Samurai Snake, for $500, we'll get you Alpha Protocol, and we have a duel unlock at the end of our goal of $5,000 with Revenge of Shinobi and Shinobi Free. I would love to be able to get Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst unlocked, but any little amount you can donate will help. And of course, can potentially go towards unlocking another incentive or two, potentially. Alright, I think that's all the um, shilling done for the charity stream side of things, so now we can shill the likes of KFC and Fila. Yep, definitely. <laughs> yeah, they're not sponsoring this, although if they would like to contribute too, it'd be appreciated. <laughs> we have a $3,000 donation from KFC. Yeah. Thank you for repping our brand. <laughs> I mean, like, even a donation of like a fucking bucket of chicken would be appreciated at this point. Can we go into Mania later? <laughs> we got a 12-piece super bucket coming in hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what character does that go towards? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who's the fried chicken aficionado? I don't know. Uh, eh, give it to Mighty. I mean, he's been at the bar all day. He probably has the munchies. <laughs> Fuck up, yeah. Uh. Alrighty, so we should probably explain some more about Crazy Taxi's actual mechanics. Uh, you don't have a gear shift... Well, you don't have a gear shifting system as such. You have drive and you have reverse. And there's some weird majickering you can do to get like handbrake turns, drifts, which will get you oodles of cash. And I believe there's like some weird things you can do, like shifting between drift and reverse to kind of give yourself a bit of a jump start. But I don't really know anything about that. That's best left to the pro arcade players and the speedrunners. Mm. Yeah, um, I sort of wing it as I go along with Crazy Taxi. I always have done. So, yeah, if you see me repeatedly ramming into a wall, there is method to my madness, I swear. Well, so you don't have to break while taking the turn. Yeah, that's Which is a so. legitimate strategy for games like this, which is uh, not surprising. Yeah. So, when you notice they might get different colours when you go to pick up your mm. would-be customers. The colour directly correlates to, one, the amount of time you have to get your customer to his, his or her destination. 
and also the distance to their destination. So the red ones will be very close by, but you only have like several seconds to actually get them to their destination. Whereas the green ones are more like your cross-country trips. Yeah. And also the color uh, theory is going with the time as well. If it's still in the green, when you get in there, you get a nice big time bonus. Like they pay you a bigger tip for it. Whereas if it goes down to yellow, it's average. And if it goes down to red, then they start getting pissed with you. And sometimes they will literally jump out the car while it is still going. Yeah. Probably not the smartest idea, but given how I'm driving, it's probably just as unsafe to stay in. <laughs> true that, true that. And obviously in oncoming traffic as well, I can name several reasons why it's a bad idea. Eh, it's fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> Slow. And backhands your car in the process. A yeah. hundred meters, you can literally walk there, dude. Yeah, like, Jesus. Like, that's the case for a lot of these customers, especially when they're in the red. Like, just fucking walk, you lazy bastard. It's like there are Olympians that can do that shit in 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay. And I you don't... don't have to be an Olympian to get there in, like, 20, 30, maybe, like, a minute tops if you're taking a brisk walk. Yeah. Get the out of the way. Will I make it? I don't think I'm going to make this one. Uh, it's going to be close, but it depends, uh... Time up. <laughs> ah, that's a shame. But then again, you got over 5k, so that's alright. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. how original mode works. You have a set amount of time to get as many customers as humanly possible. In arcade, it is possible for you to go way longer. Mm, well, it's the arcade and original were mainly revolving around the track, like the arenas. That's what changes between that, but like whether you decide to play for 10 minutes or whether you decide to play for a set time that's like the, your time mechanic you, if you play by arcade rules like that thing there then that's what you're getting out of you know you actually keep on going you unlock more time to work with you have 10 uh, minutes. i'm not going to be going through the gimmick stuff for Tanner. i'm just going to be playing through arcade and original just to show that off because i've never actually been any good at all at the mini games that they have yeah, it's sort of like a weird... It's kind of like the licenses in Gran Turismo, but um, not quite as crazy. So you got to like, you got to get like certain distances with jumps, perform a certain length of drift, things like that. Yeah. But they are useful tools to learn if you want to get really high scores in the arcade mode and what have you. Mm. Yeah, this is the guy I was talking about earlier, Gus. He's alright. Oh, yeah, him. It's under control. So when was your first experience with Crazy Taxi? I believe it would have been around 2000 when I first got my... Actually, it would have been a little bit before that. I remember playing this on my brother's Dreamcast before I got my own one. Uh, that would have been like late, very late 90s or early 2000s. I can't remember exactly when this came out on Dreamcast. But that was about the time that I first played it. Uh, yeah. I remember my um, <laughs> aunt or uncle having a Dreamcast that they occasionally bring around to my grandparents' place. Oh, right. And I was staying over there overnight at one point, and the Dreamcast was set up, and it had Crazy Taxi, and I think it had, like, that South Park quiz game called Chef's Love Shack, I think it was. Oh, right. They had that there as well for some reason, but uh, I didn't touch that one. Hmm. Well, I was kind of getting into South Park around that kind of time, but, you know, I was still, what, maybe 10, 11 years old? Oh, yeah, but yeah, maybe a bit older than that. Hmm. Yeah, well, I would have bad. been like five or six. <laughs> yeah. I just about made that one. I kind of got a bit lost on the way up there. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe you should learn to play. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't really talk. Um, obviously, I was originally meant to be running this game, but because of all the stuff with this... Uh, job hunting that I was doing. I didn't really have time to take on too many games, so uh, Flame offered to take Crazy Taxi off my hands. Uh, yeah. That way I could just focus on co-commentating, because I do rather like this game. It is a fun time. It really it's is, yeah. Right, it's just pure chaos a lot of the time, and that in itself is really fucking fun. Okay. Thank it's a lot to be said about arcade races that it seems to be something that Sega pretty much had on tap, and it was all 
top quality stuff. Apart from the fact you also had Daytona USA and Sega Rally, mm. you also get some of the ones like um, Formula Racing or Virtual Racing or whatever the hell it was called. And yeah. you also have Outrun. They just had a load of really, really solid arcade racing games. And I can't really name a single one that I have played offhand that I have actively hated. Mm. Why didn't you touch Shep's nuts sack? It's love Jack. <laughs> you what? You have to play games like Spank the Four Butt Monkey and what have you. Well, the Four Ass Monkey, I suppose, would be more accurate. Uh, it was really, really weird. It was a bit like uh, it's just literally a quiz show, and they just fill it with like South Park themed mini games and obvious references to like early season two and three. I guess it would be around that time. Yeah, so was... the sort of time where we just got introduced to Mr. Hanky and whatnot. No, I will say I've never really cared for South Park. Like, it just ain't my sense of humor, really. But, uh, I will say that the older stuff is definitely some of their strongest. I will, I will take to the grave that season ten was perhaps the finest overall South Park has ever been. Uh, I don't recall a single bad episode in season 10 at all. And it was also the same season that had Make Love Not Warcraft, which was just legendary in terms of uh, how highly it's regarded and just how popular it was. Ah, right. uh, yes, now my playlist has finally got onto All I Want after about six or seven songs. <laughs> so when now we're really at Crazy Taxi with the uh, playlist. Well, you said that just as it kicked in on my end as well. <laughs> oh, nice! We are somewhat in sync now. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna fall apart next time I get like, like fucking 10 in 2010 or something, come on. <laughs> true that, true that. You know, they're next to a used car place and there's so loads and loads of people waiting to get a cab back. Number one, aren't they there to buy a car so they don't have to get a taxi? And two, if they're that impatient, why don't they just take one of the used cars and just steal the fucking thing? <laughs> Uh, that's a little bit illegal, I say, while I drive across the middle of a fucking field. <laughs> exactly! I mean, if you're not going to play by the rules, I mean, that should apply everywhere, right? Yeah. Like, there is no law anymore, which fittingly has solved all crime problems. Indeed. Okay. And all people want is Pizza Hut. They just want to be taken to Pizza Hut. And we will literally go on the train tracks to make that happen. Yeah, I thought this was a shortcut, but apparently it's not. So, fuck it. Unless it is, I'm uh, partly I've got hoping, I'm partly hoping this person will get out of the car halfway and go, All you had to do was follow the train, CJ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go that way. Okay, maybe it was a shortcut. Huh. Oh yes, um, Ten Elements raises a good point, actually. Uh, sorry, I wasn't meaning to get round to it sooner, but I was kind of on a tangent. I didn't want to interrupt myself. <laughs> um, the new F-Zero medley for Smash Ultimate. Have you heard it yet, Flame, by any chance? I haven't heard it yet. No, I know it's a thing, which is cool. It is a Sega remix of F-Zero, and it has vocals by the same guy who did the tunes for Daytona USA. Oh, nice. It is really, really good. You only get to hear a few seconds of it, though, which is the only problem. Mm. But what we get is a nice snippet of potentially what's to come. But I am really surprised just how much Sega is getting involved in the uh, Smash Ultimate set. Like, really. yeah. Whether it's through um, their musical stuff or whether it's just the Sega representation in general one way or another. Mm. Yeah, I'll... When you say the guy who did the Daytona vocals, do you mean the guy from Mr. Big who did the one on uh, Snowy's Works album? Are, you, um, are we talking about someone else? Uh, no, when the guy who did the arcade soundtrack specifically for the first game, and oh, I guess right. also the second game. Ah, uh, okay. Because I know there were some songs from one of the Daytona games that uh, he did the vocals on with, I think, Sonoe on the guitar, and it was fucking great. Ah, that might make sense. But yeah, I believe I believe it's not that guy, though, unless it is the same guy, and I'm just misremembering things here. Yeah. Alrighty, let's see uh, if we have any donations or the like. Let's make sure I keep on top of that. Nope, we are safe for now, so we will carry on being crazy taxi drivers. <laughs> um, I keep losing track of where I'm going to go. That's one thing I will say with the original area rather than the arcade one, is that it's easier to get lost here because the arrow isn't that reliable in this track, on this area. 
Yeah, you don't really get a map as such. You get an arrow that gives you a vague idea of where to go, and sometimes that can take you in the right place, but it doesn't explicitly point out really good shortcuts and things like that. So that's kind of up to you to, one, remember, and two, find to begin with. But that's something that just comes with playing the game enough more than anything. Dude, I was like a couple of inches away from where you wanted to go. You could have held on. Yeah, like literally the big green box is right there. Come on. Yeah. Take me to the nondescript Japanese restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Although I'd wager if they were still allowing the license stuff, I'd wager every place would be licensed. So um, probably the Japanese restaurant would be like a yo sushi or something. Yeah. Well, we are playing the original one, and there's nothing here, so. Eh. No, they, there will have always been a few generic things. It's like, what the fuck? You let me up right in this banister. Now I'm stuck here forever. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank me later. Grand Mercury Hotel. I'm guessing that's probably something in real life as well, possibly. But yeah. Do you wanna I don't know. Maybe they maybe they found some creativity and didn't think, hey, what's like a popular hotel? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you could always look it up, see whether it's a place or not. Okay, uh, let me have a look here. Grand Mercury Hotel. There is a Grand Mercure Hotel in Bristol. Hmm, not quite the same. No, not quite. It's one letter off, so unfortunately it doesn't count. What am I, Superman? Yeah, imagine if the Daytona singer was on Team Sonic Racing, that would be kind of neat. Imagine him doing Super Sonic Racing for a moment. Oh god. Yeah. Well, I'm saying that, I'm quite happy to have Crush for Egon for that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like, that Green Light Ghost song is great. I like oh, yeah. the stuff they did for the Sonic Riders series especially. Right. Well, Crush for he covered a few of the Riders... Well, they covered Uncle Vita Fire and they covered Tree. They didn't have any songs in the actual game itself, unfortunately. Yeah, although the, their contributions, regardless, were uh, very good. I do like their version of Free way more. Yeah, same. Are we leaving today? You nearly killed me. You take me to the hotel. Yeah, Tanner is correct. Uh, the GameCube run in Dolphins so can make games look as long as you can be good. So if you want to take it a step further and have all the really good crazy taxi music as well as really nice looking graphics. Get yourself a Dolphin emulator if your computer can handle it. Yeah. Whereas so I'm sticking with Old Faithful, my completely homebrewed the fuck apart uh, second hand Wii console I bought a few years ago. <laughs> it's a uh, one in a million Freakenstein gave you. <laughs> Are we leaving today? I'm not gonna make this guy, I can just sense it. Yeah, 41 seconds, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> not okay. unless we glitch the game and, like, activate no clip or something. <laughs> yeah, it's that wild old. <laughs> so, we've broken the law, now we're breaking the laws of physics. I don't think it does, Paracat. Like, I have that version, I don't remember these songs playing in it. Game over. Um, F-Zero GX was published by Sega, why isn't that in here? Uh, mostly because we think that when you think about Sega racers, you think more like your Daytona USAs, your Outruns, and your Super Hang-Ons, perhaps. And out of the three, I thought Daytona would be a better fit. So that's the one I went with. And then obviously we have the Arcade Racer in a Crazy Taxi. Mm. If I had more choice in the meta, maybe I would have probably pushed the Super Hang-On as well, but I felt like maybe we had enough car games in there. And there's only really so much you can do of them to begin with. But that being said, I'm kind of tempted to stream Super Hang-On at some point. So, what Volk is saying is he didn't think of picking F-Zero GX. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it did come across my mind. It's just oh, okay. that, well, I don't actually own the game, so I can't... Oh, right, yeah. I think it's quite... That, and it's walls to the walls hard. Yeah, I think it's quite expensive to get hold of these days as well. Oh, yeah, let me just have a quick look a second. Yeah. yeah. F-Zero GX. Uh... You can get reproductions for relatively cheap, but if you want a um, official copy, uh, you're going to need to pay about the price of a new game recently. So oh, somewhere yeah. along the lines of 35 to 40 quid in some places. Yeah. Which is why Nintendo needs to get their shit together and start making the GameCube games downloadable on the Switch. But they're not going to do that because they're Nintendo. <laughs> 
All right, we do actually have a one dollar oh, donation. Come on, now. Uh, it's Leaf Juice with a very tiny donation. I haven't gone paid yet, so I'm donating tiny bits and bobs. But I'd like to put this towards Ray and Sonic Mania. Oh, you brave, brave man. Nice one. All right, then. Uh, so that puts Ray at $40 now. So at least we take it to a nice round. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll change that to 145 and one thing we've realised from these vid boards, particularly this Mania one, is that fucking anything can happen. Like, we had no idea Tails would get as high and then my mate even showed up and put fucking 200 towards him and, you know, anything could randomly bulk up at any given moment, so... Like, donate to anyone you feel like, I'd say. Indeed, indeed. I mean, even if it seems hopeless, you never know. You might have someone like Crazy even come along and just say, here's a briefcase full of cash for Ray, and before you know it, he's in the lead. There's a GBA version of Crazy Taxi? I didn't know that. Oh, I have, I have to see this, hold on. GBA yeah. Crazy Taxi. I can't... I don't know how well that would actually go. Hold on a second. Actually, it... Oh, uh, no, never mind. It, it, it looks kind of bad. <laughs> well, I may have to play that out of curiosity at some point. It looks like a prototype, like, PS 0.5 game. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what frame rate it runs at. I'm literally just looking at images for the moment. But, uh. I don't know, maybe it's better in motion, but still, apparently it exists. So, if you want a handheld crazy taxi, there you go. Yeah, although, actually, does anyone know how good the PSP one was? I think there was a PSP one. Um, I think that was... Hold on, let me have a look here. PSP Crazy Taxi. Uh, yes, there is a Crazy Taxi Fair Wars that exists. And it does look like the original version of the game, although it does have new locations by the looks of it as well. Oh, nice. So yeah, it looks very much like the original version of uh, Crazy Taxi, but it looks like they've added some new locations and whatnot. Mm. Probably a little bit sharper in the graphics department as well, I would imagine, being on PSP. I don't know, it does a little bit, although it doesn't look as smooth, but that just might be because of the resolution of the screenshots I'm looking at. Yeah, plus... PSP, it's downfall, and like pretty much any handheld really is the anti aliasing tends to be a little bit off. But hey, you gotta make some sacrifices when you pull into a tiny little system. Yeah, although the PSP is an incredible little handheld device. I mean, I'm not sure if many people think much of the Vita, but the fact you can get like a PSP and you can put like all your PS1 games and what have you on there, having portable Final Fantasy VII was. It just blew my mind. I had no idea this was a thing, and then I realized I could do the same thing for Final Fantasy VIII as well, and I damn near peed my pants with this. And more importantly, you can play Sonic Rifles on there. I suppose you could if you have no trouble. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I've been memeing about it for fucking years, but I do have a legitimate soft spot for Rivals. It's fun enough for where it is. Yeah, I mean, you can have a soft spot for something that isn't particularly great. I mean, I have a very soft spot for Jake Coon 2 that is equivalent to Quicksand <laughs> in its softness. It is. I, I feel like it is an amazing game, yet I know full well it is very, very average at best. <laughs> yeah, see, the thing that endears me towards Rivals is it is the epitome of average. It is like a dead in the middle, not on your timeline, fucking the most generic average Sonic game you could possibly have. And that just, that tickles me for some reason, I love it. <laughs> Can you just imagine if there was an award ceremony for the most air title? <laughs> just like, the most decisively average thing. <laughs> yeah, you get like a little trophy that's just like a thumbs to the side. <laughs> No, it would be it would be an outstretched palm, and it would sort of wobble side to side, and just to go. Eh. <laughs> That's what it would be. It would literally be a bobble hand. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so um, I guess we can go back onto the soundtrack a little bit. Mm. Um, was Offspring or it's like something you would listen to just? out the blue, or was it only something that kind of came synonymous with this game? 
it actually, like, that kind of music, it's okay to me. Like, I do like a few Offspring songs, and there's a few things that are like, similar to it that like, are up my alley. To me, I actually didn't associate it with this game until a little bit later, and this is something that some people might see as cruelty given just how great this soundtrack is. But when I was growing up, my Dreamcast was on a smaller TV in the living room, and so quite often when I was playing, I wouldn't be able to have sound on because my parents would be watching TV on the on the big TV, and so that was kind of suffering at times. But you know, it wasn't until I started replaying this a lot when I got older that I'm like, yeah, this music's pretty fucking great. Hmm. And you have to remember that this was sort of around the time where you didn't really have headphones for televisions. Mm. Like, a lot of televisions didn't have headphone jacks, and neither did a lot of consoles. And even then, it didn't take long for them to end up just being inbuilt into joypads in the end. Mm. Well, I think on top of that, also, the old TV I was using at the time, it was knackered. Like, seriously, it ended up dying with smoke coming out of it. So you can kind of imagine the sort of state it was in. It was really old when I had, when I had it, and that was like I was, you know, back in the fucking 90, late nineties, early twenty ten. It's a sort of thing things. that you'd happen upon at your local charity shop while your parents mm. or your grandparents were looking around, and you just find this old ass CRT TV for like a fiver. Yeah. And you think, I could actually afford that, and it's like. Hey, we can get a TV just like, look, I told you, it's too expensive, but this one right here for a fiver and it all works. Yeah. And at that point, they can't refuse because, you know, they give you pocket money. You can do whatever you want with that shit. So it's just like, I want a TV. And it's just like, oh, okay, and then you just have a TV in your room with a little uh, VHS thing built into it. Yeah, well, in this case, I think it was the main TV for a while, and then we folks got a better one, which... I imagine a good TV by, like early 2000 standards, so, yeah, <laughs> it was still like, you know, 23 inch, not not that great picture quality or anything, but it was better than this lit than I had. <laughs> oh yes, uh, quite possibly better or the next best thing to the charity shop purchase. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. It depends how much your um, hand-me-down provider ends up upgrading and just how balls to the walls they go with their upgrade. If you have someone who's very, very timid, it's not quite as great, but if you have someone who, like, insists on, like, the best model phone, and, like, every couple of years they get a new one, it's great. Yeah, see, so, yeah, I'm the kind of person, if I have something, like, technology-wise, I will cling on to it for dear life. Like, I know there's that kind of thing about iPhone owners, they want you one every year. Like, I have my iPhone from, I think, 2013, and the on-off switch is broken, but otherwise it works, so fuck it, I ain't replacing it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I didn't even use a smartphone until like two or three years ago. I, I had like this old flip over Nokia for such a long time because I didn't feel the need to get a smartphone because it's just like, it can play music. Yeah, well, I have an MP3 player for that. And oh, you can play games on it. But I have a Nintendo DS and a PSP. Why would I need to do that? Yeah, and why would like, I? Hey, you could do all sorts of other stuff with it. But yeah, uh, I need a phone to be a phone. Yeah. I, I... Uh, by the way, I think Tom's saying you need to speak up a little bit. Just okay, I'll again. put the microphone a bit closer to me. Hopefully that'll do the trick. That sounds a little bit better to me. But uh, yeah. It may just be I knocked the arm ever so slightly back earlier. Yeah, it happens, I know. <laughs> but, like, yeah, because I was given the phone I have now when I first started going off to college, if I recall. And so, like, I had, had that then and it was new, but... That was replacing a Motorola Razor that I'd had for six or seven years. Okay. Uh, Fog needs to go up in volume as well. I'll turn him up at the end of this round. <laughs> yeah, we've only got a minute left, so uh, just give it a mo, and we'll be able to get that rectified ASAP. Yeah. But the thing is, now that I have a smartphone, it's great because I don't know what I'd do without it now, because it now means I can just take it all in one. And also it just means I can go on YouTube and browse the internet and what have you whilst I'm on the bus ride to work, which is something I couldn't do on anything I owned prior. I, it means I can shitpost on Twitter both when I'm in bed and when I'm out, so it, it kind of helps me keep up to date with my schedule. <laughs> Indeed, although Tom's a bit of a uh, uh, MacGyver in that regard, because I believe he still uses his Nintendo uh, DS for uh, Twitter. Uh, the old 3DS, yeah. That, that thing, you know, the... Tom says he's going to bed, and like an hour later, he's talking about fucking Steven Universe or something. <laughs> that is exactly right. 
Uh, we know our pal Tom very well. <laughs> Alright, I don't have time to get you to your stop. I'm just kind of going to abduct you and just drive off somewhere. <laughs> Alright, let's turn you up a little bit. Righty ho. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Game over. Okay, so we're about halfway through what we're doing with this run, so let's go back to the original mode now. And get myself lost again. <laughs> That's fine, we can see how long you can last. <laughs> well, it, it's more like we're doing so many rounds just to, you know, keep, get people some good coverage of both the main courses here. And see if I can mm. end up going different places because I end up finding a lot of the time I find different segments of the areas each time and I sort of get stuck in a little box, sort of. Yeah, you get those long moments where you just get yourself stuck like in between a couple of pieces of terrain and it's ridiculously difficult to get yourself out of there. <laughs> well, it's more like you end up you noticing you're low on time so you start picking up the ones with the shorter area, like shorter uh, uh, requests and you end up going back towards through the same little section. Yeah, they, you get those ones that are very, very short distance, but then doesn't count for the fact you need to do a U-turn. <laughs> so it's like, I can't do it! And then you learn how to do a U-turn properly, and suddenly it becomes a little bit more possible. Uh, no, we didn't do Crazy Taxi last time. Uh, no, um... Yeah, because that would have been the Sony font. So yeah, Crazy Taxi wouldn't have been on that. Yeah, well, no unless we did something similar. There's a possibility, but I couldn't... Uh, we did Gran Turismo. That's like the only recent game that I recall doing. Yeah, I remember you did that and you just had the like, initial day you were playing for the whole thing. <laughs> oh, that was a ripping good time. I enjoyed yeah. that immensely. <laughs> You know, you're worried about, like, the offspring and bad religion getting us in trouble. Although, it's a bit weird, because Eurobeat, for the most part, seems to get around uh, YouTube and Twitch quite easily. Maybe less so YouTube than Twitch. Because, um, I know Maximilian, who's a uh, prominent YouTuber that I follow, he often has, like, Eurobeat stuff going in the background. And when I go back to watch the VODs, like, very rarely will it be muted when I know there's been Eurobeat playing. Usually the Eurobeat stuff gets ID'd, but it doesn't mute it, so it's fair game, really. Yeah, because sometimes they're just remixes of something anyway, and if they're going to like start claiming for that, then, you know, they're going to have to get the original person who did the original song claiming them back, and that's just too much of a headache to be worth it. Yeah, so you, the, the funny thing for that is, I remember when I uploaded my long play of Super Mario Land, it got an ID on it by, you know, that fucking rap group who did the... Super Mario Land rap song, <laughs> rather than from like Nintendo claiming theirs. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I, I, I forget who it was, but that just really fucking amused me when I saw it come up. It wasn't Dwayne and Brando, was it? No, no, no. Like, it was an official thing, but... Oh, right, okay. Because what I think like rap and Nintendo and what have you, I usually go to Dwayne and Brando first, because that's just the one I'm most familiar with. Yeah, although to, for that, I... I the thing I associate most with Dwayne and Brando is that Mega Man 2 one. Oh yeah, I, that, that's a, that is a top quality tune. But then again, the Sonic 2 one's pretty decent too. Mm, I remember the main Sonic one, that, that's pretty great. Yeah. Fuck. Fog, someone put a tree in my way. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, the city wanted to put greenery here and that was the only place they could put it. Uh, they could have put it not on the path where I'm going to be driving. Well, they should probably just make them out of cardboard and put them on wheels so that they can conveniently wheel them away from you if you're charging in towards it. Yeah, like uh, compelling magnets or some shit. <laughs> I don't think trees are magnetic, and if I, I believe we started genetically modifying trees to be magnetic, that would cause more problems than solve. Eh, uh, don't know how to try. I seem to remember a trick as well with Crazy Taxi that I used to do, where I would deliberately drive somewhat slowly next to like a really big lorry or a truck, and if I stayed just next to it and kept driving, I'd keep accumulating money. Oh, nice. So that was like my go-to strategy before I eventually learned how to drift, and then I just tried to drift everywhere, which was met with um, varying degrees of success, but when it was successful, it made money and then some. Yeah. 
Then obviously it becomes a case of knowing where all the jumps are as well, so you can get all the crazy jumps, and they get you a lot of cash too, if I remember. Mm. Oh, these selfish bosses making me turn around when I pick them up. Can they go somewhere else? <laughs> or run slightly further towards you. Yeah. I guess we've got the people going through their favorite Eurobeat songs as well. We've got Deja Vu, we've got Gas, 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 Space Boy. Space Boy is a very popular one. That tends to be the one that's usually at the very beginning of a lot of those uh, multi-hour long Eurobeat mega mixes. Yeah, I've got to save the top master ice. <laughs> Alright, what offspring song am I on at the moment? Because I don't remember this one. Uh, have you ever? No, I've never heard this one. <laughs> It's like, have you ever? No! <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> uh, let's see, my favorite Eurobeat song... I am... Hmm. That's a very good question, actually. I'm not sure which one I am most partial to. Hold on, I have a... I have, like, the beginnings of a Eurobeat playlist. Uh, let me just, uh, consult this. This will probably tell me. Uh, uh, when the Sun Goes Down is a very good one. Uh, Crazy on Emotion, also very good. And Heartbeat. I'd say those are maybe my top three at the moment, although it tends to change. Like, I'll listen to a song and then I'll tend to grow even more fond or less fond of it. So it can, it can alternate ever so slightly. So a song I didn't care for much like last month. Next I month I could go and listen to it and think, you know what, this is actually really, really good. Yeah, like, it, that happens sometimes and I think Damus is trying to trigger you in the chat right now. I'm not <laughs> clicking those links. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh no, he stopped hurting these. No. <laughs> Bring up your pettiness. Hey, <laughs> so it's like K-pop but bad. <laughs> well it is. I mean, I fully acknowledge that it's just like cheesy as fuck music, but it's so enjoyable. Yeah. You know, it's like disco music in anywhere other than a disco. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think anything's anywhere near as bad as disco. Okay, I don't think Cole's meant to go down there. Oh well, let's just lose this person here. You got a few points and now you're in the subway. Look at me, Ma, I'm a train! <laughs> I don't think Crazy Tram has quite the same ring to it. <laughs> nah, not really. Okay, yeah, this person's not making it there on time. <laughs> Can you just imagine just like the intro to that? Hey, hey, go at a brisk casual pace and Crazy Tram! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this will work eventually. But you ain't gonna be there for it. Later, bitch! Uh. And it warps into another dimension where there are faster taxi drivers, most likely. <laughs> Nah, uh, it's the, like, universe of the law-abiding taxi drivers, so it's a lot more boring. Yeah, that is true. Um, apparently Damos forgot, am I getting Spider-Man in September? Probably not, but only because I think most of my free time in September is going to be completely drained by playing Two Point Hospital. I think that's probably the only reason. Otherwise, I'll probably grab it when it goes a bit cheaper in price, perhaps, if it's any good. I might play it next generation when they actually make a version that runs at a decent frame rate. Yeah, I mean, who knows, maybe they'll fix it in time for the release, but, um... Yeah, uh, they've confirmed that it's 30, which is, like, you know, once they Unacceptable in this day and age, honestly. It is, yeah, like... I mean, in a, in a stage where graphical fidelity can only go up so much higher, really the best thing to do is to make sure your game runs smoothly, and not having 60 frames is just... Yeah, so I mean, even when you're using the excuse for oh, it's meant to be cinematic, just like no, I'm not here to watch a video game. I'm here to play a video game. Yeah, and the thing that annoys me as well is that now they've got like that PS4 Pro console as well, and yet it's still not 1080 60 for everything. <laughs> like you think if they're doing an enhanced version of the system, it would be so you can get good performance, but now it's like. Some games are upgraded to 60. Like, I know the Shadow of the Colossus remake runs at 60 on the Pro, but there's a lot of stuff that still is locked to 30, even though they've got all this extra power they can use. The thing is, with the uh, Pro consoles especially, this is pretty much consoles trying 4K for the first time, so... 
it's not going to be absolutely perfect and they're not going to patch the amount of power needed to do 4k 60 frames per second consistently yeah, it's just one of those bridging the gap steps and i'm pretty confident whatever the next generation of console will actually be they'll probably master it think of it this way the PS4 Pro and the uh, Xbox One X is probably a prototype of whatever the next generation console is going to be. Hmm, but give, like looking at the trends of how things are working, I imagine it will be more a case of they're just going to carry on pushing like graphics, graphics, graphics over frame rate. Cause, but the thing is, normies don't know any better, and so they don't have to try with frame rate when they're selling consoles. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know. I think people are trying to be a bit more discerning nowadays. Although there are still plenty of people that fall into that trap, and that will ultimately get some most of their money. Hmm. All right. So uh, Tanner asked a question: Why are taxi drivers over where you live just the worst? I nearly died in London. <laughs> uh, basically, they want to get where they are as fast as possible. Whereas, like, nowadays I know a lot of the cabbies are being put out of work by that Uber thing, which is like an ongoing controversy, and like, I hear about it a lot, because one of the people that I work with at my volunteering gig, like her husband, is a taxi driver, and so I hear a lot about how Uber have been causing problems all the time. Ah, right, I see. But, I mean, the black cab drivers, they're, they're not usually too bad, at least from my very mm. limited experience. Yeah, the black cab drivers tend to be alright, it's when you get the ones off apps and shit that they tend to be a little bit more hit and miss. Yeah, well, you're taking that risk, so if it doesn't turn out alright, well, you don't really have anyone to blame but yourself, really. Well, yeah. to an extent. Well, yeah. Obviously, you can't always account for your driver being a complete bastard, man. Hmm. Yes, license. <laughs> Game over. And uh, what do we got? A class S license! <laughs> oh my god, Santa. <laughs> Please folk, they're the African American cab drivers. <laughs> oh my god. Santa, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate you in the loving sense, just so I'm clear about that. But I think the correct term now is they're the drivers of colour, and not the one the amount they use. <laughs> I don't know, because I feel like no matter what I say at this point, I'm going to get into trouble one way or another. <laughs> yeah, you racist fuck. <laughs> hey, I know what I meant, and I'm pretty sure 99% of people also know what I meant. Everyone else is just fake outrage. Well, yeah, but but we have the clip of you saying it, and that's enough. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I do also have that clip of Tom Reed and that Mein Kampf thing, which is probably far more damning. <laughs> yes, I would absolutely agree. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got two more rounds in this run, and then it will be Tanner time. <laughs> Radio. Let's go over the other side and pick up some different people this round. <laughs> I can't fucking sing, I apologise. <laughs> it's fine, my insurance will cover this. Just checking to see if we've got any more donations as well, sorry about that. Wait, black things are cheat code? I had never heard about that. If someone can, like, tell me what to do, I guess I could try it. Uh, let me have a look into this for you, hold yeah. on. Make sure you're looking for the GameCube one in case it's different between versions. Yeah, let me just go Game FAQs GameCube. Let's see if this is a thing that exists. Uh, camera reset, demo cam, different camera view, first person, play in another day mode, play an expert, play with no arrow indicators, unlock the pedal bike. Alright. Uh, okay, uh, you can do any variations for the trick to work. Uh, highlight a driver at the choose your character screen and press L and R, L and R, L and R, and hold L, R, and up and choose your driver. Right, if you were, if you paste that in chat when I get to it, it will make it a bit easier for reference. Yeah, we'll do. I will yeah. make sure that is pasted for you when we are closer to the end of this run, and then we can try it with the bike. Yeah. It's more as a pedal bike as well, it's not like one of those uh, motorcycles with like a side carriage or whatever. <laughs> That'll be interesting to see. 
Yeah, if you haven't posted it as well, just to confirm that what I said was correct. Mm. Yeah, if you repost it when I prompt you, and then we can try it. Yep, uh, I'll just make sure I uh, copy that second. And then I've got that on my clipboard, and then I can just paste it in closer to the tie. Uh, this is perfectly legal, Jolion. Uh, anything's legal if you don't get caught. Yeah, I don't see any police here. Shit. In fact, we we have to take people to the police station. So it more makes me wonder what the police are actually doing. It's like these damn taxi drivers are doing a better job than us. You know what? If you break the law, just turn yourself into a taxi driver and have them take you to the police station. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're getting into a conversation about buses in the chat. You know, for a game that's also as crazy taxi, <laughs> but actually talking about just taxis and public transportation in general is a bit drab. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's the sort of thing like old women like talk about over a cup of tea and like a thing of cakes and one of those weird tower things. Oh, you say that, but as someone who relied on buses who get to college back when I was in that and having fucking every day something be delayed or something break down or whatever. You know, you get in a habit of bitching about public transport. Yeah, I mean, I have to take the bus as well, but I don't talk about it day to day. <laughs> yeah, well, I acknowledge that the bus service is more often than not crap, and I acknowledge that if there is a delay, they don't fucking tell you. Yeah, and like, you try and call up the company and they're like, well, oh, I don't know anything about that. Or, well, our problem. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, the most annoying one, which is when the bus is already late, and then you see it arrive at the station, and rather than just get the fuck on with it, the, the guy gets out of the bus and just loiters around, gets gets himself a tea, you know, like that, and it's like, mate, when you're late, you don't have that luxury. <laughs> if yeah. You're on, if you're on time, people are understanding if you need to go have a drink or whatever, whereas if you're already late, we're frustrated already. <laughs> like... Don't push your luck. <laughs> I think it's more of a point that if they get to a stop early, they have to stop for a while just to make sure that they don't hit the stops too early. Because yeah. being too early is way worse than being late. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're early, you will not hear the end of it. Hmm. But um, if you're late anyway, sometimes it's a little bit of a toss-up, though. Because I have heard from some circles that if, you're s if after a certain amount of time being late, like to the point where the next bus would be coming in pretty soon anyway. Mm. Sometimes they just get you to stick around anyway and then they just sort of carry on from there. Yeah, but when the buses are like once an hour, they ain't really got an excuse. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's what yeah, that's the other thing as well, just the sheer infrequency as well from time to time when it is obviously a service that would benefit from occurring twice as frequently. <laughs> yeah, and it's especially like prevalent given I'm not anywhere near London so I'm reliant on private buses rather than like the like proper red London ones so they don't have any kind of standardization or anything you just well, got so you don't have anything like stagecoach or anything like that uh, no we have like private companies so mostly no one knows who the fuck they are what you mean like a filers or something like that oh well, just like they're you know, then they're not the proper recognised London buses. Ah, okay, so they're like pretenders to the throne almost. <laughs> well, yeah. It's more that the proper London ones don't cover anywhere that's too far out. So, like, if you're outside of their coverage zone, you, it's like a Wild West of bus services. Yeah, but I mean, with London, it's kind of twofold, because not only do they have a fairly frequently running bus service, but they also have the underground as well. So, mm. if it is a bit too close, you're just usually better off going underground anyway. Yeah. I get to look forward to doing that entire song and dance again when I go to MCM in October. Ah, uh, fun times. Oh yes, it will be very fun times. Yeah, let's get this guy instead. Yeah, um, TwitchCon, I'm not sure if that would be something I'd specifically go to America for. I'd want to do something proper, like either the New York or the San Diego Comic Con, or maybe Dragon Con even, potentially. Mm. 
Like TwitchCon, not really. Yeah. Like maybe if we were like super duper popular on Twitch, then maybe because obviously we'd be able to attend there as attendees as opposed to you know just visiting. Hmm. But sadly, we are irrelevant. <laughs> Well, it's more that we're a uh, small, humble group that doesn't really have any limelight like, to speak of. Although, you never know what can happen like three years down the line. Uh, it's funny, like, you can't just say you're like... relevant. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it's just the lull. I mean, we used to get, well, way back in the day when HSC was getting like hundreds and thousands of viewers on average. You never know, you could end up getting to that point again. Okay, Droman. <laughs> <laughs> I will dream, because it's the dreamers that get places in life, I'll have you know. <laughs> or at yeah. least that's what I hear people say. I think that's like one of the first generic motivational speaker speeches that people tend to give. Yeah. Like, keep dreaming your unrealistic dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine, like, you're the optimist, so I've got to balance you out as the cynic. <laughs> yes. Step two in that is achieve the unachievable. <laughs> You know, that'll keep you occupied for the rest of your life. Then step three is burn out and cry. <laughs> oh no, you'd be dead by then, so you don't even have time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the music does cycle very fast in this game. I believe it doesn't play the full song nah. a lot of time. It like fades out after two minutes, I think it is, or like a minute and a half. Something maybe? like that, yeah. Yo, 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 we gotta move. I suppose that's partly how they managed to get around some of the licensing on some of these songs, I imagine. Maybe they just said, we can do it for cheaper, but you can only play, like, a certain amount of the song. I think as much as anything, it's just to kind of keep it going. Because, like, bear in mind, you play this in most likely 5-10 minute sessions. So they want to get a bit of a variety of songs playing. Yeah, that's true as well. I mean, in the arcade, your chances are you're not going to last, like, 10 whole minutes. Yeah. Demos, uh, HSC is partnered on Twitch by virtue of getting partnered back in the day when there was basically fucking no one on Twitch. <laughs> like, nowadays it never like, qualify for partners, like, I've looked at our stats, but yeah. Yeah, I recall the requirements being, like, at least five times more harsh than what it was when we were, uh, when we got partnered initially. Mm. Yeah, because like, I don't really like the affiliate system that they got, because like, what it is, is it's revolving around like, you know, the bits and stuff like that. Which, I don't know, like, I feel more comfortable just running ads and shit. Hmm. But yeah, HSC and MCM, I mean, obviously I attend MCM uh, at least once a year, so obviously I'll be going to October, so hey, if you spot me, feel free to say hi. Hmm. I mean, whether or not you'll remember that in a few months' time, I don't know, but I'll just say it here now, just in case anyone's like, in their notebook, note to self, if you see Volk, harass him. Whereas I don't really go outside that much, so that's probably a no from me. <laughs> yeah, the uh, com life ain't for everyone, like, Especially if you have a dislike for crowds, you would get absolutely mullered in a place like that. Yeah, I kind of found that out a couple of years but this ago. Way, <laughs> if you have anxiety around crowds, the best time usually to go is a Friday, because it's not nearly as crowded usually. Mm. Saturday, just don't. <laughs> yeah, that's like the If you have though. any kind of uncertainty towards cra crowds, just don't. Mm. Stay well away. Okay, Volk, if you could hook me up with that code. Oh, oh you've done it. Nice one. So, yep. LNR together, I'll take that is. Yeah. So okay. you just do LNR, 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 then LNR up and choose your driver. Okay, so. You have 10 crazy minutes. Oh, did I pick someone by mistake there? Well, that's alright. If you need to give yeah. it a few attempts, I'm sure you can do. Go ahead oh, okay, so LNR, LNR, LNR. LR and up. Let's choose a driver. Let's see whether yeah, that did it. We're gonna have some fun. No, I'm in a cab. Let's Damn try it. that again. <laughs> if you try it again, I'll look up some other versions as well, just in case. LNR's alternate. Let's try that then. You have ten crazy minutes. Go ahead and pick a car and driver. L R L R L R L R up driver. Yeah. We're gonna have some fun. No, that's the cab. 
Are you doing try Eleanor alternating? That's like what I did for the last one. Oh, is that what you did last time? So have you tried alternating and have you tried both together? I've tried both, but let's go. Okay, now let's... one, two, three. Let's see what that does. It. Oh, here we go. I right, got hey. it. <laughs> nice. Let's right. do it. I can't wait to see this on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> you're literally, you're literally in a rickshaw. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> it's a, it's a rickshaw with a fucking DFS sofa in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> oh, we have achieved a new dimension of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's even got like the bike sound effect as well. Holy shit, my legs are tired! <laughs> Get me back in a cab! Uh, <laughs> he looks tired when he legs forward, I know. <laughs> Alright, apparently the offspring is over and it has now gone to Alien Ant Farm. I'm oh, okay right. with that. Alien Ant Farm's alright. Yeah. I did that one Michael Jackson cover that everyone knows and that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, that's obviously the most popular one, but I like um, movies especially. That's one of their uh, best ones, I reckon. Uh, that's about right. Yeah, what else is uh, coming up? We've got some Americana, and some Bowling for Soup. Oh, good Ooh, shit. That would be good if we get to that. I love me some Bowling for Soup. One of the, um, it's one of the several bands I've actually seen live. Oh, uh... They were very entertaining. They opened one of their songs where this is a song about that one time my girlfriend hit me in the face with a shovel. <laughs> it was a good fun. It was a good laugh. I also got to see uh, Newfound Glory, Green Day, and like, there's a bunch of other bands as well. But those are like the main like American rock bands that yeah. I uh, got the chance to watch live. But you know, this seems like a pretty decent arrangement. I mean, you can still lie down if it all becomes a bit too much for you. <laughs> yeah. uh. Imagine him sauntering up to the Tour de France. <laughs> like, if you went this fast on the bike, like, holy shit. Who even needs steroids at that point? <laughs> yeah, like, and the fact that I'm still jumping over other cars and shit on it. <laughs> Like, that's one thing I will say that they brought in Crazy Taxi 2, like, there's a car jump mechanic where if you press Y, it flings the car in the air, which Oh, is... like the lowriders! Sort of, yeah. Oh, that's pretty neat. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, you can see he's already out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm it's like, it's okay, careful, I've only got another seven and a half minutes of this to go. Oh shit, I think I need to go up here, yep. There we go. <laughs> and underwater no less as well. Yeah. God, that must be some fucking work on your legs, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. It's fine, we can breathe underwater. Don't ask, don't ask any questions. Yes, this is a putting the pedal to the metal in a completely different set. Yeah. Oh, and we got another jump. Remember, folks, we are raising money for Child's Play, so if you want to get any more donations in during this run, we've got just under seven minutes left so far, like right now. Yeah. And uh, the nights will be closing off on, at now. that point, don't forget. So if you have any last minute donations to go towards nights, now is the time to do so. Yeah, um, I actually I think the Sing Song ones will probably be towards the end, but if you want to pick which graphical style kind of uses, you want to get that in quick. Um, apparently Richie is at work, but um, he says if the um, whatever song gets met, we'll um, do it tomorrow. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it will be done at one point or another, otherwise, um, well, <laughs> apparently I do a good crazy taxi guy, so who knows, maybe I could do the night scene like that. Anytime, any place, I could just see your crazy face! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I am incredibly unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't fucking it is lie. probably my one most redeeming feature. <laughs> uh. 
That was a really damn solid turn, by the way. I just caught that on the stream. <laughs> yeah. So, my, re my redeeming quality is that I'm usually around, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> we can always rely on you to boost the enemy shit. Of course. I think I'm going the wrong way, but fuck it, I'll find a solution. Oh, maybe not. So yeah, it's worth noting, I correct me if I'm wrong, but when you actually get combos, where it shows you like the money, it's not that the money is accumulating, it actually adds whatever amount on there is. So if you get like a really big combo, mm. each car weave that you end up doing will eventually get you like 25 bucks a piece. Yeah, so like the idea is go, like swerving out as much as you can without actually touching. Because like, obviously when you collide, it then completely kills all your like, combo that you built up. Yeah, and that is how you get like the really big scores. I'm pretty sure like there's a class above S license. Uh, maybe. If there I is, I need... haven't got it. <laughs> you need over 10k, I believe, for it. Oh, right, yeah. It's just okay. from what I remember, because I believe Max played Crazy Taxi at one point, and I may have watched it, and he is rather good at the game. I think at one point he got like 20k in arcade mode. It was oh. rather insane. Fucking the guy nice. has Crazy Taxi chops. <laughs> oh, Tana throwing the shade. Flame's redeeming quality is having someone to dunk on for liking bad anime, because my taste is good. Uh, given Tana has slandered Oriyuma before, I think his taste is bad. <laughs> I can understand why that particular guy needed to go to Pila. <laughs> yeah, some of them do look like that kind of person. <laughs> it's like, what warehouse did you stumble out of to get that combination of clothing? <laughs> Whereas well, I, a fashion god wearing a fucking Sonic shirt right now, can am absolutely in a position to criticize others. <laughs> well, that's okay. They can't see. You. <laughs> yeah. And you're not really in the position where you can see, so as long as you're the only one around, who gives a shit? Oh well, yeah. You can dress like a slob in private if you want, but you know, if you bring that out in public, expect someone to turn around and say, Hey! <laughs> Why are you gonna dress like that, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Those ain't Nikes! Yeah. Yeah, love life is good shit, aren't you? Alright, where is people? Where are people? Here's, po here's people. There we go. I do like the fact that you still have the taxi sign on the actual rickshaw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> it's a shortcut. Ah, uh, that's fine. You've got two and a half minutes to, uh try and beat the score. I think you managed 5k... well, like, you're already, like, matching your highest score, I think. Mm. So, if you can get to 6k, I think that'll be a good one to end off from. Yeah. Especially on the bike. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna make this guy's thing, so fuck it, this one's someone else. <laughs> oh my god, the animation for reversing the bike. <laughs> There's no brake or reverse lights either. <laughs> You have to make the sound effects yourself then. <laughs> it's just like you guy going, doop, doop, doop. Oh my god. Hey, I have class. You don't have to, you know, silence to that. <laughs> oh no, I'm not denying it, but I'm not exactly confirming it either, because you have, you have slipped on a cage. <laughs> I'm going the long way, which I probably shouldn't have done. Oh well. Well, I kind of hope we'll see like a resurgence in arcade racing games sooner or later. I mean, obviously we've got Daytona USA 3 on the way, and like that's good, like a good start. Maybe Sega will think, "Ooh, we could do like another crazy taxi game." Yeah. That would be amazing. Like most recent arcade race that I've played, was Slipstream, the indie game on Steam, which is really fucking good. But other than that, I ain't really seen that much going recently. Yeah, I mean, it's not really some. I mean, obviously indie developers are good for sort of picking up the slack, but I mean, 
we need more arcade races. I mean, obviously, we want the F-Zero, like we have done for the past 90 billion years or however long it's been since F-Zero GX came out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I beat 6K. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Well done. Oh, Daytona US3 apparently is already out. Is that like just in the arcade cabinets, or is it? Is there actually a console version on the way? It's nice at the time where if your last passenger and the game time you have left match perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm going to make this one, if only because... Fuck it, there's a train. <laughs> yeah, I've oh, missed it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's, let's just keep... Yeah. You got the 6k and you showed off the uh, pedal bike, yeah. so... There we go. It was a good one here. to close off on. <laughs> so, yeah, is Tana ready to take over? I will uh, give him a message. Hold up. We are just about done here. Just check that he's ready to go and that he's got co-com as well. Yeah, I should be co-comming with him for this one. Oh, nice no, one, mate. Seeing as uh, Richie's at work. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have practiced more diving at my heady, but eh, what can you do? Yeah, sometimes you, the needs must. So, have we got the confirmation that he's good to go? I literally just sent the message, and he is typing. Mm. He's ready. Okie doke. Well, thank you very much for stopping by for some crazy taxi. Hope we can continue to raise some crazy money all day. Volk, do you want to sign us off in the voice? Hey, hey! Thanks a lot for joining us for Crazy Taxi! We'll see you at night! Signing off. <laughs> Good stuff. Goodbye for now, folks.